Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Superman. It's Ubermensch. <laughs> Ubermensch being, you know, Superman. You know, and the idea is kind of like being psychologically superior to other humans in a way that, like, you know, one, one concept of Nietzsche is like, don't hold on, don't hold a grudge, don't, don't seek revenge, you know. Um, if you are going to seek revenge, do it, like, then and there, because otherwise you're just hurting yourself. And you could say that, like, that applies to Buddhism as well. I think there's a quote from the Buddha where it's like, holding on to anger is for like you know revenge is like holding onto a hot coal in your hand you're only hurting yourself i should point at you not me but it's you you're only hurting yourself and it's like you never know if you're actually going to get a chance to get revenge on them or not and um, it's a waste of energy in my opinion me personally i like to take any anger i have and um oh, that's another nietzsche idea it's like uh don't repress your emotions right you know, take take those emotions and do something good with them. You can do good. You can do good things with negative emotions, right? Anger is an example, even though anger supposedly activates uh, brain pathways for both negative and positive emotions. And I think that's part of the reason why people can get addicted to anger and like feeling angry is like it is both. It's one of the only emotions that are paradoxically it's paradoxically a good emotion and a bad emotion, but it's bad for your heart. So I'd say it's a bad emotion, but it's not like something you should repress either, because like they say, anger can override fear. So like me personally, whenever I've been afraid of something, I will just kind of like make myself progressively pissed off enough to where it's like the anger overrides any fear I have, and I think that's what makes someone brave, right? I think it's one way to be brave. The trick is to not rely on anger for like everything. It's like, you know, and that's another way you could like see if someone is actually afraid of something or not. If like they give an extreme um, emotional reaction, like if they're extremely angry about something that doesn't require that level of anger, right? They're probably afraid of something. And it's that emotional response of anger that's um, allowing them to, uh, succeed beyond their uh beyond their fear but um anyway so nietzsche dies right as as one does and then i think it's around like world war ii this guy named albert camus comes along and he's like yo i'm french i smoke cigarettes and i talk about philosophy and he kind of comes up with the concept of a and then there's John Paul Sartre. He's like, just Google him. He's got like, so there's the handsome Albert Camus. And then there's the guy, he calls himself ugly. Not not Albert Camus, but like, there's John Paul Sartre, right? And John Paul Sartre considers himself ugly. I mean, Google a picture. I mean, you, you, I, I'd say he's right. Um, he's a brilliant guy, but he's not exactly easy on the eyes. One of his eyes is like, looks left. Um, and, his, and then like, him and uh, Albert Camus would just like argue. I think it was John Paul Sartre was like an existentialist, and Albert Camus was like, um, well, he was an absurdist. And the idea of absurdism is like, you know, we exist in a meaningless void. I, I consider like absurdism basically optimistic nihilism. It's just another word for it, right? And I don't even think like, okay, here's another idea, right? The concept of optimism and pessimism fall apart in the face of nihilism as well, right? like those are based off concepts that have been built off something else and like if you peel back enough layers there is no true meaning to anything right it's all based off different ideas and there are no original ideas that come from like the universe and if god doesn't exist right we exist in a reality where god is dead meaning like through science we've killed him like we realized that there probably isn't a god so god is dead basically right and if there is no god there are no supreme doctrines that uh, one should follow, right? And if you break down any concept far enough, you realize it, it, everything comes from something else, but nothing comes from the universe itself, right? And so, what do you get when you pull back all the layers, right? N nothing. <laughs> That's how you get nihilism. It says it's nothingism. At, at the very edge of everything is nothing, you know? Um, 
For some people, that's, a, that's, a, that's like a bleak idea. Me personally, I think it's like freedom. And absurdism is kind of like looking at that from like a good perspective, right? And I feel like absurdism is uh, like nihilism, but you add some comedy to it. And a lot of people are gonna be like, that's not what that means, and all like typing in the fucking comments. Um, but it's like, okay, here's an example, right? Just unhooded myself, so you know, I'm being for real this time. Um, we are great apes. Technically, humans fall into the category of great apes. We're mammals, and then there's primates, and then there's great apes, which is what humans are. We are great apes. Um, Google it. We're, we're literally great apes. Um, people are like, no, we're humans. Yes, but humans fall, like, humans are a subspecies of great apes. At the end of the day, all humans are, and there's, like, been, like, different... I think humans have existed for 6 million years, roughly 6.5. Modern humans, Homo sapiens, have existed for like 100,000, I think. Um, but there's been like many iterations of humans. At some point, evolution, evolution, like people think it's a linear path. It's not. It's, um, it like branches off and shit. So it's like, okay, here is a monkey. And I, I don't know the exact order that this shit goes in. I'm not a, uh, the, per the kind of person that studies that shit, but I have like a, a genuine understanding of how evolution works. And most people do not have, a, a, people that don't like the concept of evolution generally have a misunderstanding of it. It's not saying that like, we evolved directly from a fucking monkey. It's saying that there, it branches off, right? So like, here's monkey, okay, here's a branch, right? And it's like Neanderthal. Homo habilis, and then that branches off. I don't remember like where the exact split happens between like Neanderthal and Homo habilis, but like Homo habilis is like a type of human that existed along the way to modern human, which is us. We are modern human, uh, modern humans. Great. Right? Every other subspecies of human has died off. We are the only subspecies of humans remaining. So that's something to feel proud of. We have survived. We have beat all the other humans that have existed for six million years. Um, we beat the Neanderthals, because like for a while Homo sapiens and Neanderthals existed beside each other. Um, and people have a misunderstanding of Neanderthals as like these unfilling, unthinking, you know, ape things. Um, and again, humans are apes, but like we just tend to put them in on a, in I guess a colloquial view of them being uh, inferior to humans, but like they had empathy, right? There was a cave and they found, um, like, a group of, uh, Neanderthal skeletons and shit, and one of them had a broken leg, right, if one of his legs was, like, fucked up. Somehow they were able to figure out that, like, the leg of that Neanderthal had been messed up, but the other Neanderthals took care of it still. Like, they, they I'm assuming it was, like, a relative, right, and it's like, ah, oh, man, my, uh, my first cousin broke his leg, right? Well, he's family, so we gotta look after him. And they were able to deduce that they still cared for the the, the other Neanderthal that had hurt itself, like hunting or something. So they, they weren't just um, amoral, immoral, whichever you wanna use, uh, ape things. They were actually pretty intelligent and they just happened to die off. I don't, and I think part of it too is like inbreeding, right? Humans still have Neanderthal DNA, right? Um, I think it's like the average person has like one or two percent Neanderthal DNA. So you have some Neanderthal in you. You're not entirely Homo sapien. You're like two percent Neanderthal, um, and that's generally the case for everyone, as far as I know. And it's part of it too is like inbreeding. So like we could still breed with each other. Like we were still fucking Neanderthals. And Neanderthals were fucking us, but. Um, me personally, I've heard the, the idea that like, I am like, not even talking about absurdism anymore. But anyway, <laughs> humans are apes, right? Um, and we'll like, do certain things to make us feel more superior than other apes. You know, an example is like, sure, having a nice car, or, you know, wearing a suit, or, you know, Going into a coffee shop and standing around reading uh, plastic binded chunks of dead trees with like ink written on them so that way they convey meaning. Like, 
That's that's a that's a pretty cool philosophical experiment. If you want to trip yourself out for a whole day, break down everything to exactly what it is to like the finest degree you can get it right. It's like no, you're not reading a book. You're reading a, a plastic binded chunk of dead trees that have ink, synthetic ink placed on them in the form of symbols that convey meaning to you that you visualize in your head using your frontal loop. That's an example of absurdism, you know? There's all these concepts that we give meaning, but it's like, none of these meanings really have anything outside of society, right? And it's kind of like, you can laugh at it then. That's the way I view absurdism. I think it's like the funny version of nihilism. It's like, ha, ah, we're, we're a bunch of great apes acting like we're, we're special because we wear suits and we uh, exchange green pieces of paper for hamburgers. <laughs> Chunks of dead cow placed in between harvested vegetables with uh, tomato placenta juice, which is ketchup. Uh, tomatoes are technically, you know, when it, you're eating a slice of tomato, it's a vegetable placenta. And we're, we're you know, eating a chunk of a dead cow, of a dead mammal that we have sliced to pieces, and then apply a piece in between two pieces of um, yeast that we have essentially, I don't really know how bread works, but um, you, you break bread down to what it is. It's like yeast that we've like put into a fucking oven to make it grow, right? And then we're putting that in between a chunked up vegetable and then um, tomato placenta juice, which is ketchup. And then we're giving someone else a thing of uh, dyed green paper that we have decided has value, right? And it's no longer even based off like silver and gold, it's just based off the Federal Reserve saying like, hey, this has value. You take away the Federal Reserve, the paper's meaningless. Um, that's an example of like the absurd, you know. Granted, we, we, we got rid of the gold and silver, like value-based money um, in like the 60s, I think. But yeah, that's like an example of the absurd, you know, just peeling back all the layers. And it's like, we have all these weird concepts that don't really make any sense when you really peel them back. And um, we're all pretending like things are important when they're not. Right, like there's a lot of things we act like are important. One of them being social status. Um, outside of society, you know, you go in the fucking woods, a bear doesn't care you have a million dollars in your bank, it's gonna eat your face. And I think that's another trap that like stops people from doing what they actually wanna do with their lives. It's like status, that they're concerned with losing status and reputation. So they never go after what they really truly want. Um, and you could throw in some Heidegger, which is another philosophy the concept of automaton conformity which is the idea that like people will um run away from freedom if they have too much of it right too much freedom is equally as bad as none according to heidegger i believe it was heidegger uh, you know if uh if you have too much freedom it's almost paralyzing right it's like you go into an ice cream shop and there's 200 fucking flavors Right? It would almost be better if there was only three or four. So it's like, you're paralyzed because it's like, every option is equally valid. I need some restriction. And so people will like, put themselves in the confines of certain like, uh, social niches because they're afraid of having that much freedom. And you know, one of them being reputation, I'd argue. That's one box you could put, like you could narrow your uh, selection of choices. It's like, well, how does this look in terms of reputation or status? you know, status, status, whatever, you know, it's like, oh, I'm gonna have less pieces of green paper to show to other people. That, that means I'll have less social status. And it's like, is that, is that really more important than like, you know, not being on your deathbed at 70, being you know, like, oh, I never really went after my dreams, you know, I just didn't even try. Uh, me personally, I'd rather fail miserably and say, hey, I attempted it, you know, and that's another idea that needs with me on is uh essentially uh finding what you love attempt attempting the impossible even if you failed it would still be like you know i don't know it just sounds beautiful to me like the idea of like attempting the impossible even if you failed it's like damn that's a pretty uh i don't know pretty pretty hardcore way to live and nietzsche would also say um Live dangerously. That's the spice of life, is to live dangerously. 
build your houses on Mount Vesuvius. Um, may you be conquerors and plunderers of land. Argue amongst your people. Uh, like just crazy shit, man. Like you exist in a meaningless void, you know. Embrace chaos. Live. Go, go do crazy shit. Don't kill anyone, you know. Don't don't get in too many fights. Uh, but you know that's it's kind of where uh, I guess Nietzsche and Albert Camus would like meet. It's like we exist in a crazy void, right? Of chaos. Let some of that chaos, you know, invite some of it in. Let some of it out. Uh, embrace it. It is your friend, you know. You could argue it's the nature of the universe is chaos. And, you know, you apply nihilism, but why is chaos a bad thing, right? It's only a bad thing because you could argue um, your perception of it, you know. You could, like, flip that around and be like, okay, according to nihilism, all these perceptions are... Uh, you know, they come from different things that have been built upon each other. And you peel them back far enough, there's nothing. So, decide what you want out of life. Decide what you think the meaning of life is, and pursue it. Both Camus and Nietzsche would probably agree with me. And that's where nihilism and absurdism meet. So, if you liked what you saw, um, subscribe. I'm probably going to be talking about more philosophy. That's one of my favorite subjects. People seem to like it. Um... Every time I do like a vlog cast episode where I talk about philosophy, it always gets likes. Um, and I, I seem to get a few new subscribers every time I talk about it. Subscribe, comment what you think. I love discussing this stuff. Um, tear, feel free to tear any of my ideas apart. You won't hurt me. All I'm after is the truth, and the truth is on no one's side. The truth doesn't care about your feelings or mine. It just is, you know. Um, yeah, comment. Be sure to subscribe. There's going to be more of this stuff in the future. Um, this thing never shuts up. It does occasionally when I meditate or I like wear myself out. But um, it's always generating ideas and they need to be expressed in some way. And yeah, okay, it's another concept. If you have a why, you can deal with any how. I exist to create. That is my why for living. I exist to create, and I came upon that idea when I was 19. If you have any, if you have a why, you can essentially deal with any how if you can reframe it. Um, the Stoics would agree with that. It's for another overlap between nihilism and Stoicism. It's the concept of reframing things and breaking them down to what they really are. Any bad thing you go through can be reframed to where there is a lesson to be learned. Um, me personally, I had a pretty shitty childhood, but I've reframed it in. Um, I feel like it's contributed to me developing manic depression as I've gotten older, but it's also made me, made me mentally tougher than a lot of people, meaning um, I am able to just pursue things until I get results, and I'm indifferent to how much I have to work to do it. Like, it doesn't really... That's, a, that's another thing I've never really understood is, like, the concept of, like, um, someone having a weak work ethic. It's, like... Dude, that, that's nothing. You're, you're literally having to sit down and put words on a piece of paper. Or like, that's that's not hard. Um, hard is being abused, you know. And even then, it's like, okay, you, you can break it down with even more nihilism. Which is like, so it, it wasn't like the universe hates you or anything. There is no God. The universe is chaotic. It doesn't care about you either way. It's not going out of its way to hurt you, it's not going out of its way to shit on your head, it's not going out of its way to do you any favors, right? Um, so it's like, it isn't like I've been cursed or anything, it was just like, okay, in terms of probability, that happens to a percentage of people. Just so happened to be me, and you can decide if you it from a societal constraint of this was a negative thing that happened, or, you know, you could completely destroy that because it's nihilism, and go, ah, well, Probability. What are you going to do? Just probability. It happened. And uh, fuck it. Why not laugh at it? Absurdism. Probability. What are you going to do? Just probability. It happened. And uh, fuck it. Why not laugh at it? Absurdism. And you know. Take different schools of philosophy. Destroy them. All of them. This is what I like to do. And then pick out the chunks that you like and combine them to create your own philosophy, you know.
create your own philosophies based off the different chunks. Go around with your hammer, be like, bam, stoicism, bam, absurdism, bam, nihilism, all the different isms. And um, tear them apart, rip them to shreds, and then pick out what you like from them, and then combine them into an aggregate of something that fits your view of reality. And yeah, I think that's where I'm going to leave the video. If I went on another tangent, that's how I do these. These aren't scripted, they all come from my head. Um, and I want it to feel like a conversation, so I hope you enjoyed our little chat. Stick around for the next one, this was a lot of fun. Be sure to subscribe. Um, check out my other videos, the, the vlogcasts are pretty interesting if you like philosophy. They're mainly tech oriented, like tech and philosophy is kind of like the, the niche. Philosophy of technology, I guess is what I would say. But uh, yeah, subscribe for more of this. This was really fun. Hope to see you in the next one, if I do another one like this. I don't know. Have a good one. Go read some cool, weird books. Live dangerously. Peace out.